Now we will meet two representatives of the ESI group. The title of their presentation is ESI's Hybrid Twin Technology to Support Industry 4.0 Revolution for Smart Stamping Production Lines. I give the stage to Simon Masquet, Account Manager, Manufacturing Business at uh, ESI Group, and Chandra Gupt Govade, Technical Sales Manager at ESI Group. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Chandra, uh, and and I'm joined with my colleague Simo. Uh, hello, Simo. Hello. And and thank you for this opportunity, specifically for Daniel and the Rice team and Tech Tank Conference team. Uh, and really excited to be here and share uh, our experience and knowledge and also some of the ongoing collaboration which Sima will touch base at the end of the presentation. So uh, before we uh, before we go into our hybrid twin concept or technology, just to give you insight into how we reach there. So and so. <clears throat> ESI founded in 1973, ESI Group <clears throat> commits to or supports or envisions a world where in our industry uh, industry partners or customers commits to, commits to bold outcomes. So these are outcomes based on either current regulations, uh, environmental impact, safety standards, and, and also sustainable business model. ESI provides and supports the reliable and customized solutions anchored on physics-based modeling and virtual prototyping. So ESI is predominantly focused on five main sector, automotive, aerospace, uh, electronics, energy, and industry. And today we'll touch base on hybrid twin concept on automotive side. But how, how we reach there is as as everybody knows, in last century, the product the focus was on the product, but now we moved on to the product's life cycle performance. And ESI is engaged and supporting this through its four outcomes, certif pre-certification, smart manufacturing, bringing the human-centric approach with the <clears throat> actual people of building the product, and also pre-experience, bring uh, experience the product when it's in use. And we are well established over 47 years of experience worldwide and currently led by Crystal de Rouvre as a, our leadership team. So what makes it so unique to us? It's simple answer is the physics of material. And ESI reached world premiere in 1985 when we demonstrated the first virtual crash model for Volkswagen Polo car. And that's, I think, led the a, a paved the uh, direction or adaptation of virtual testing in automotive industry for crash and safety um, analysis. And that's where it's unique. We differentiate ourselves and that's in our DNA to represent accurately the physics of materials. So I think everybody, if everybody is aware of the, you know, developing a new car from scratch to end, but ESI is a paramount of ESI's business model or technology is virtual prototyping, design the product, uh, test them virtually, test the manufacturing, assembly, uh, assembly processes, validate them, then also test the, through the experience the product during the manufacturing as well as in the product life cycle and that's where we also add into a hybrid twin concept so the ESI's focus is zero real test zero real prototype zero defects and zero time zero downtime and being a trusted partner with our customers supporting them in their industry 4.0 journey so I think everybody here is experts on a stamping and assembly. I don't want to go into detail, but just to mention is uh, 
<clears throat> it's all about the physics of materials and accurately predicting or uh, representing the actual uh, process win uh, process characteristic process parameters that gives you the accuracy of your virtual simulations uh, results so <clears throat> but there will be always some kind of deviation with the virtual world and physical world and then how we how we can make sure at the end of the stamping line the products will meet um, the quality is required and if there is a deviation how we can ad adapt that deviation and making sure take the right decisions at the right time and that's where the hybrid twin concept comes in making decision based on the data collected based on the real real time sensors data so in the last century, the focus was on the product, but now the focus has moved into the product's life cycle. So what happens to the product throughout its life cycle journey? And that's the, that's the key in terms of, that's where the second paradigm shift comes in, the art of decision making at the right time. So building a virtual replica of our, either it's a small system, whole system, a whole product. And, and using that replica, the engineers can make decisions at the at the at the engineering phase, or they can make the decision at the actual product in use. So, an engineering stage, such as look, looking at okay, where should I put the sensors? Uh, what the frequency of the the data to be collected? Making fault models of so finding the process window. In when it, you are going into the in-service side of the product, when the product is in use by end user, okay, how predictive maintenance, diagnostic prognosis. So, so it's all about now moving on to the product performance cycle rather than the product itself. And that's where ESI brings in a hybrid approach where you have a data-driven model and virtual model based on the physics. I think Simo will go into more detail on this with uh, some example case. So ESI is, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of ESI is working with, with, on existing technologies, focus on all our outcomes, bringing this hybrid twin concept with uh, combining this model, making right decision at the right time at the engineering level, as well as uh, making decision when the products are in use. I think, Simo, I'll hand over to you to go a bit more deeper into these four stages mentioned. Exactly. Thank you, Chandra. You can go to the next slide, please. And uh, we will go more in details and click on the... Okay, perfect. So, ESI for this first step has developed the add more application within the ESI vertical platform Visual DSS, in which the different species of the puzzle converge. The first video shows a recent model of an impact simulation for a crash box with the speed, thickness, and mass as a parameters. In a dynamic and real-time way, we can see how the intrusion level is affected by the impact speed. The second case is an example of a stamping process where the parameters are the thickness and hardening curve variability. On this case, you can see how the thinning is affected. The third image is to go a step further. We show the reduced model for a whole stamping process with the ability to change operations and with the capability to get the response of the model for each operations, depending on the parameters of the other operations. Note that due to the confidentiality, the image and the values are not the real ones for this third image. But in that case, we use it 17 parameters for the analysis. ESI and more is a multi-proposed and multi-physics solutions and produce parametric models of scalars, curves, and contours using the most advanced regressors. ESI and more can address high number of parameters, tens, even hundreds, from small number simulations. We build a parametric solution of the, the parametrized problem through the proper generalized decomposition techniques, call it PGT. Then the design space can be explored in real time and tryout costs can be further reduced with model order reduction technologies. For sheet metal forming process, once we have a stamping simulation with palm stamp as a virtual model based on physics, we proceed to automatic creation of the rigid model. 
In this way, we will have a multi-parametric multi and multidimensional model able to provide a dynamic response in real time and online and with the ability to explore the entire design of space with a good accuracy of plastic thickness and uh, plastic strain thickness and temperatures, for example. With an efficient computation, we lower a computation complexity, retaining characteristics of the full order model. This approximation is the first step to build a complete hybrid twin. What is important to note here is that the first step already provides a benefit in itself for product and process engineering activities. Model order reduction can be used for stamping feasibility analysis during the product development and for the validation in the tryout phase to understand the sensitivity and the robustness of the process among other analyses. Next slide, please. The following step consists of the system modeling, which allow us to incorporate those elements that are not present in the finite element simulations to replicate the sensors, the real production, not only a single part, and to extract and analyze the data to apply machine learning. To be successful in this type of development, I like to differentiate between engineering phase and in operation phase, depending on the needs and the goals of each company in a short, medium and long term, we will focus in one or other or both areas. One of the key points, of course, is related to the data. What data, What? Uh, which is uh, the scale, where and when to collect them? Then other question, questions follows. Are these data uncorrelated? Are all them useful with respect to the goal? Is some important data missing or inaccessible? What is the intrinsic dimensionality of the data? One of the big challenges is how to perform accurate predictions in the multi-parametric case and in the low data limit. In this phase, control signal flow models are developed and simulated to improve the reliability and understand the system uh, uh, sensitivity to process fault combinations, to identify critical measurements parameters, to define sensors strategy, and refine controls. The full system simulations data will be used to train appropriate machine learning algorithms, used for anomaly detection and pattern recognitions or physical sensors data. The hybrid twin will be used in offline mode and at the beginning to test the system virtually, adjusting the algorithms and then use it embedded into the PLC control for real production online. Next, please, Shandra. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to briefly mention an example of a hybrid twin implementation for a sheet metal forming process. In this case, it's a hybrid twin for our customer system and in particular for their new multi-step hot forming process. I will not go into the details of this technology, but this is a new high-speed hot stamping process that now operates at the same speed of cold stamping and that eliminates the laser cutting operations. The aim for this hybrid twin project is to achieve zero defects, maximum quality, improve cycle time, and reduce energy consumption. As I explained before, it will depend on each company the selection of the goals to be achieved. In this case, the challenges also lies in the ability to model, model each part produced and its dependence. Temperature control is evaluated among other parameters like material and process variables. The objective of the multi-step hot forming hybrid twin project is the creation of an augmented virtual prototype for the control and adjustment of the offline and online process. And to finish, the value to the customer is first, the performance optimizations like productivity, speed, cycle time, bottlenecks, detection. The second, extending operational life of equipment. And the third, model-based methodology breaking barriers between process design and operations. And that's all for my side, Prichandra. You Thank you, finish. Simon. Uh, thank you for detailed explanation on those four steps and also touch base on the uh, GISTAM uh, collaboration we are doing currently. So, so just to summarize so far what we what we showed or what we presented in terms of so in a nutshell for hybrid twin ESI concepts you have virtual twin you have a digital twin both one is based on the physics one, one models one is based on a data driven model 
then you combine them as a hybrid twin ESI is concept. But when it comes to use of them as Simo touch base just earlier regarding what is either it's real time piloting, so you're controlling the, for example, if there are anomalies in the product quality at the end of the price line, okay, how you can make decision, real right decision at the right time with the real sensory data coming and feeding back that to the PLC. So you're getting, you're rectifying the issues in real time. Or or another is a decision support, which is offline, where you can test test the system based on the previous data. You have the fault models, but offline, not directly from the real sensor. And this is where we add value with the customers working together or collaborating with them, being a trusted partner to to achieve uh, achieve the goal of the industry 4.0, supporting this uh, art of decision making, making sure that our customers are committed to their bold outcomes with their end users. Uh, we are there to support them and drive them and be being being a trusted partner with them with our technology and experience. I think that's all from our side and looking forward to speak with you in next sessions. Thank you. So thank you both uh, Simo and Chandra for fantastic presentation and uh, we are uh, very happy to see that you also involved all parts of the press in your hybrid digital twins. And for a press uh, producer making a new process that is of course a very good place to use your methods. But if you already have a old press, how much measurements and uh, would you actually recommend them to use these uh, uh, hybrid digital twins for the whole system, even there, if you have an old press already? Um, you want to take Simo? Yeah. yeah, for an old press. Well, uh, th this is more related with uh, what we said before, and even in the first uh, uh, session, uh, it's necessary to define what are uh, the goals of the company, what are they looking for, and then uh, define uh, what to do with the current uh, facilities. And, and But of course, uh, for on a whole press, it's necessary to, to, to do some kind of uh, big investments. That's why of the, one of the benefits of, of our approach uh, that uh, mix the, the virtual models and the, the physical ones. I think, it, I think it's clearly depends on the objective, what the end user would like to, uh, uh, you know, c come out of, and then I think it's and one of the things as uh, we mentioned earlier is uh, the hybrid twin concept itself help you to support you in the engineering phase, even looking at where, what, where, how many number of sensors you will require, where it might be, and what might be the frequency of the data you need to collect to have enough information to make the right decision. Yeah. I hope yes, that answers um, the question. Uh, I think that uh, was a part of the answer, but now, of course, we we will also go back to Ingela soon, and you will soon also be in the Q&A sessions, where we will actually uh, love to ask more detailed questions about this. So, thank you both for an interesting presentation, and see you back soon. Okay. So, thank now you. back to Ingela. <laughs>